resource that we're going to talk about is our component capture kit. This is another super beneficial resource that we use, especially when we're working through a design system build for a product that already exists. So you already have a product built or you already have a marketing site done. You might be using this template for that. Uh, we'll use it in UX audit. So when we're auditing the UX of a product, we'll also be capturing the different components and things like that. Um, and this is really valuable when presenting to stakeholders. If you are ever thinking about like, how do I present the need for a design system to stakeholders, showing them the current state of the design world through this component capture kit is super, super helpful because it kind of shows them maybe some of the inefficiencies that are currently being put out there with the design. And we'll kind of go through and, and show you how that can work there. Just like our other resources, we have a guide kind of showing you how to do it. But I think this picture up top kind of shows uh, how it needs to be done, right? It's just like Pokemon, right? We want to capture all the components on our design here. And we'll do this as a team. So we'll have multiple folks going through the site or the product capturing different things and kind of dropping them in, in here together. We've broken this out to kind of follow um, the atomic design pattern that Brad Frost kind of um, coined. So you'll notice we'll have like tokens up at the top, then atoms, so things like buttons or drop downs, really those small design components, molecules, things that are a little bit more advanced, organisms, and then grids and layouts. And you can add to this and you can change the way you want it to function. Um, whatever works best for your team. We just think of design systems in this way. Uh, so this works best for, for us. So the way we would go about doing this is, and I've pre-staged this with a screenshot here that we can kind of zoom in and see. So this is Amazon's uh, product page for a basketball hoop outdoor. And what we would do is we would go through and really just capture a bunch of screenshots and drop them in those different categories. So I might go through this page and capture in all the different button states. That might be the thing that I'm looking for is I'm capturing all the buttons, maybe different cards, uh, maybe different gallery layouts, so something like this. And what we would do is we would drop those into the corresponding areas. So for example, and I've kind of pre-done this already, is I've got a bunch of, you know, if you just go and look at the different button elements on this page here, you can start to see uh, there's a quite a variety of different buttons. And actually this is a drop down, so we can move this here and I can kind of zoom in here because these do get kind of small. And so we kind of captured all those different buttons. And then you'll start to notice things like, oh, is this a button or does this go on a, you know, maybe this is a snack bar or a, a bottom alert type thing. And we're gonna really go through and just kind of capture all those different elements, right? We might capture the different type styles that are being used. I think this is, I put in the right, yep, type style, so this is, uh, from the brand, you kind of caught that up at the top there. Here's another type style that we have. We might figure out where we've got uh, alerts or modals and different media galleries, things like that. So we really want to kind of capture where all of these elements would go and really start to figure out or show where the more complicated pieces are too, right? So I'm going to drop this screenshot in here. Here we've got sort of a gallery component or a carousel, so we'll throw that over there. Um, and this is really helpful because, like I said before, you're going to start to see where the current state of your product design is and even if you're not building a design system, this is helpful to find areas where you can unify that system and really find a way um, to be like, oh, hey, we are using an old style of a button on these pages, so maybe we can clean this up. So this is a really good template, really good uh, process to go through as a team. And like I said, we include this in the UX audit as well, because a lot of times when we're doing UX audits, we're also doing sort of a review of the overall um, design system and how it's applied, whether there's an active system or not. But like I said, it's super beneficial. So there's a lot of different ways to go about building out design systems, right? Um, a lot of people think it's just about building out the components and building out the right design pieces and making sure everything's connected and functioning and seamless token um, automation all the way through. While that is true, 
really a lot of the work is about connecting our team and getting that team alignment. And these resources are really focused about getting that team alignment. And this is part of our design systems in Figma course. So you don't need to have used the course to use these resources. They're all free in the community. But if you really want to unpack how we build out design systems in Figma from like a designer's point of view, the whole design team here at Headway put a really great course together. It's available at shipwright.design. So definitely feel free to check that out. We've got some other resources out there as well, like UX audit templates, building customer journey maps, a brand guideline template. And then of course, our free UI kit and design system starter kit. And we use these in everything that we do. And if you do use any of these or download them, we're definitely looking forward to any feedback that you might have of adjustments or things that that work best for you or didn't work for you as we're trying to build really the best resources that we can for design systems and for designers working through their, their different product designs.